All right, guys, it's time for fun with math. So happy Friday. Uh, we're going to start here with our uh, logarithm uh, workout. So um, let's just kind of review. If you have a blank piece of paper, maybe you want to copy these down uh, with me, right? So they go into your long-term memory. So remember the definition of a logarithm. It's log base B of X is equal to Y. And so remember what it says. It says, and it's just B to the Y is equal to X. So that's the definition. So B to the Y is equal to X. And then we have these identity properties here that we want to remember. And so what are the identity properties? Well, this is just, the first one's just log base B of B to the X. It's like they undo each other and you just get back X. And you can go the other way. So B to the log base B of X is also going to give you back X. We, so we call those the identity uh, properties. And then finally, the really important ones, these log laws here. So remember the log laws, there's actually three of them. There's a product rule, a quotient rule, and a power rule. And so the product rule says what? It says log base B of M plus log base B of N is equal to log base B of M times N. So when you add logarithms, you multiply on the inside. Versus when you subtract logarithms, so log base B of M minus log base B of N, this is going to be equal to, well, you divide on the inside. So log base B of M divided by N. And finally, if we have log base B of M to a power, that power can come down in front. So it's P times log base B of M. All right, so we'll be using some of these rules actually uh, today. In fact, we're going to head over to some homework we did here. Uh, so let's take a look at this assignment on understanding logarithms and equations part two. So there's two problems I want to do with you guys. Uh, let's first look at number five. Here's number five right here. So um, on number five, what do we have, right? So we have this, I'm going to write this out over here. So number five, I have log base five of x minus one plus log base five of x plus 23, oops, and that's equal to the number two. And so this is a logarithmic equation. How do we solve this uh, logarithmic equation? Well, the idea is we wanna write this as a single logarithm. So we're gonna use that product rule. So when you add logarithms, you can multiply on the inside basically. So we can rewrite this as log base five of, of what? So of, and we're gonna take this guy here, x minus one, and multiply it by that guy there, x plus 23, and that's equal to two, All right? So we just use that product rule basically of logarithms, and now we can just do what the log says. So log says basically five squared is equal to that on the inside there. So the log says five squared is equal to x minus one times x plus 20. Three, And so now we have a quadratic equation. So we want to move everything over to one side. And so we have 25 equal to, and so we get x times x, which is x squared. And then we have x times 23, which is 23 x's. But wait, we're going to take off one of those x's. So we get plus 22 x's. And then minus, and so minus 1 times 23 is a minus 23. And so then what we can do is we can subtract 25 from both sides. And so what are we going to get? We're going to get a 0 equal to, and we have x squared plus 22x, and then minus, and that's a 48. And so now we can factor this quadratic e expression. So it's x plus or minus something, x plus or minus something. And now notice... I would probably first guess for 48, I would think six and eight, but six and eight are not gonna give you that plus 22. So we're kind of out of luck there. So we have to kind of go back to the drawing board. And in fact, I kind of have to go back to the very beginning because I don't know any other factors in 48 other than six and eight, because those are my common multiplication facts. So we're gonna break this down, definitely divisible by two first. And as soon as I do that, my brain's like, oh yeah, two and 24, that's gonna work. So two and 24, I can definitely, add and subtract 2 and 24 and get a 22. 
I'll add 24 and I'll take away two. And that should give me the 22X in the middle. And so there it is. And so now I have this times that's equal to zero. So what do I know? Either X minus two should be equal to zero or X plus 24 should be equal to zero. And so what does that give me? That's going to give me this one, X is equal to two or X is equal to negative 24. And now here's where I have to be a little bit careful. So let me kind of move around here. I have to be a little bit careful because what you want to notice is what? <clears throat> is that if you try to plug in this negative 24 up into your original equation, you're going to get what here? You're going to get log base 5 and negative 24 minus 1 is negative 25. And as soon as I write that negative 25, I'm like, uh-oh, we are in trouble because you're not allowed to have negative numbers inside of a logarithm or zero for that matter. So this turns out not to be a solution to the original equation. This one's good to go, but this one not because when you plug it in, you get a negative number out inside your logarithm. What this is, is a solution to this equation here because if you plug in negative 24, this will be negative 25, but then you'll multiply it by negative 24 plus one, which is a negative one. So a negative and a negative is a positive. So it, it works on this, this part, that equation, but not in the one above it. All right, so that just has one solution, x equals uh, two. And so the second problem I wanna do together is this number 10. Let's take a look at number 10 here. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for us. So this is a nice little, logarithmic equation. And this is kind of like the second type. Um, so the first type, you kind of had logs all on one side. And what do you do? Um, this has logs on both sides. So what do you do? And so we have ln of x minus 2 minus ln of x plus 8. And it's equal to ln of x minus 1 and then minus ln of x plus 12. And so what we're going to do is similar to what we did before. We're going to use properties of logarithms to combine the logs. And so in this case, we have minus, so we can divide on the inside. And so this will be ln of, and you have x minus 2 on top, divided by x plus 8 on the bottom, in parentheses, equal to ln of, and we have x minus 1 on top, and x plus 12 on the bottom. And then because, so this is new, so now we're not going to do what the log says, although you can kind of do what the log says and still make this work. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that logarithms are one-to-one -one functions. Because this is one-to-one, -one, we have ln of this equal to ln of that. So since the outputs are equal, the inputs have to be equal too. So you can just drop off the logarithm. So basically you get x minus two divided by x plus eight. It's the same thing as x minus eight divided by x plus 12 in this situation. And so we go from a logarithmic equation down to a rational equation. And so what we're gonna do now is clear those denominators. So we'll multiply everything by x plus eight and x plus 12. And so this will be what? So when you multiply this side, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have the, oops, sorry guys, I hit the wrong button there. All right, so when you multiply this side, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get the x minus two and the x plus eights are actually gonna cancel. And so you're just gonna have an x plus 12 next to it. And then it's gonna be equal to, and then over here, when you multiply this side, the x minus one is gonna stay, but the x plus 12s are gonna cancel. So you're just gonna be left with an x plus eight. And so we go now from a rational equation to a quadratic equation, and then we can multiply this out. So that's gonna be an x squared. And then plus, you're gonna get a 12x minus two x, so that's 10x. And then a minus two times 12 is a minus 24. So to be equal to, again, x times x is x squared. And then you have a plus 8x minus x, so you get plus 7x. And a minus 1 times 8 is a minus 8. And so now what you can do is just move, let's just move over everything to one side, because it looks like a quadratic equation. So we'll just try to move everything over to one side and see what happens. So on both sides, we'll subtract x squared, we'll subtract 7x, and we'll add 8. So that just makes this right-hand side 0, basically. And so what do we get? Well, it's like magic. The x squared actually cancel on the left. 10 minus 7x is a 3x. Minus 24 plus 8 is minus 16. And on this side, of course, everything is going to cancel because that's by design we did that. And so we get 3x minus uh, 16 equals 0. 
So now we can move that 16 back over. We'll move it over to the other side. And so 3x is equal to 16. And then divide out both sides by 3. And so x is equal to 16 over 3. And that is our final answer uh, there. All right. So I think everything looks good here. And so we can move on uh, to what we need to do today in this activity, which is working with natural functions. So first, let's make sure we understand what natural functions really are. So there's two natural functions. Uh, the first one is e to the x. And the second one is ln of x. And notice they're inverses of e. Each other, And this is actually displayed on your calculator too. So if you look at your calculator, you'll see there's an LN button on there. So there's LN. And so you can do LN of five and then it'll give you a number. And then behind that LN, there's an E to this. So if you hit second and LN and plug in that answer, it takes you back to the number five because they're inverses of each other. So I, we always like to draw a picture for this. So the idea is what? So over here, you have some inputs. And our function, e to the x, takes us over here to some output. So let's say we plug in 5. It'll take us over to e to the 5. And then what ln does is ln will take e to the 5 back to 5. So our inverse function for e to the x turns out to be ln of x. And so these natural functions, e to the x and ln of x, they're functions we use a lot in calculus, basically. But they're just inverses of e. Uh, of each other. So what we want to do today is just basically review all of, a lot of the things that we've already done, but we're going to specialize them to E's and LN's. So let's look at our first uh, problem um, here, and it has to do with working with the properties. And so we're going to simplify using properties of, and this one, we just use properties of uh, logarithms, basically. We don't even need properties of exponents in this one. So just properties of uh, logarithms. And let's review them real fast. Even though we did them at the beginning of this video, let's just redo a couple of them, but let's do it with E's and LN's. So for the identity properties here, because we'll use these in a minute, for the identity properties, they're actually a little bit easier to write down because you should write LN of E to the X is X and E to the LN of X is X. So the identity properties become a little bit simpler. In fact, I usually tell you guys I didn't really memorize log base B properties. I memorized them in terms of E's and LN's, but then I could rewrite them in terms of log base B uh, or B to the if I uh, needed to. And so then the log laws become what? So log laws become a little simpler too because it's just LN of M plus LN of N is equal to LN of M times N. That's the product rule. And then the quotient rule becomes what? ln of m minus ln of n is equal to ln of m divided by n. And finally, the power rule becomes ln of m to a power. And that power can come down in front. So p ln of m. And so that's actually how I memorized them as a, uh, as a student. But then knowing I could always write them in log base uh, b. And so when I see this problem here, A, my brain kind of dings right away. It's like, oh, that three is like a power rule. And that plus is like a product rule. So we can rewrite this as being equal to e to the, I write that as ln of x cubed plus ln of five. We'll go one step at a time. So just using rule three there. And then this is equal to, well, we're just going to use that plus. So when you add logarithms, you multiply on the inside. So it's e to the ln of, and it's x cubed times 5. And then e to the ln of the anything is the anything. So it's kind of like these guys kind of cancel. Like they really undo each other. And you can write down x cubed times 5. Or better yet, you can write just 5 times x cubed. And so that's the answer. Let's do this again. Let's do it straight up with logarithms. And so here, what we want to do is we want to expand the logarithm using these three properties, basically, right? That product rule, quotient rule, and power rule. And so notice you are going to use all three properties because you do have a quotient. You'd have a division there. You also have a product down here as a times. And then you also have a power here, but don't forget the square root is actually a power too. But the issue is really, which rule are you going to use first? One, two, or three to simplify this? 
And you want to use the rule that involves everything. So if you say like, oh, well, the prod rule is my favorite. I think I'll use that first. Like, no, 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 no. The prod rule only involves the bottom. You know, rule involves the bottom and the top. And that would be the quotient rule. So we'll use that quotient rule first. And we can rewrite this then as ln of square root of x. And then minus ln of y times z squared. Now again, we start over like which rule do we use? Well, we definitely have a product rule and we definitely have some power rules happening here that we need to use. But which one do you use first? Well, I probably would wait on the power rule because this one is kind of stuck inside here and in, in, in times the y. So I think what I would do first is probably do that product rule. And so this will be ln and I'll write that square root as x to the one half because I know I'm gonna have to do that. And then minus, and now here's where we have to be careful. So here's the big mistake. You guys love to write ln of y, and you write plus ln of z squared. And that is almost perfect. But you're missing what? Parentheses, right? So don't forget the parentheses here. That You're taking off the whole thing, not just the ln of y, but you're also taking off the ln of z squared. And so now we can take care of the 1 half and the 2 with that power rule. So those numbers can come down in front, basically. So we get 1 half ln of x minus L and a Y, and we'll distribute that minus sign at the same time. So then minus a two L and a Z. And that is my final answer. And remember on these, we just do them one step at a time. Right, so just practicing using the properties of logarithms, but specialized to ease uh, and LN. So now we go from properties to solving equations. So let's saw some exponential and logarithmic equations just using the E's and uh, LN's. And so let's take a look at this first one uh, right here. And so there are a couple of ways to solve this. Probably the easiest. So you have 18 divided by one plus five, E to the negative two X, and it's all equal to three. The easiest one is just, just this idea of, let's get this by itself. Right, so can we get the exponential piece by itself? So right now it's in the denominator. So we need to move that up somehow to the numerator. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this clearing denominators again. So we'll multiply both sides by 1 plus 5e to the negative 2x. And so when you multiply this side by it, we're just going to get the 18. And when you multiply this side by it, we're going to get 3 times 1 plus 5e to the negative 2x. And again, our goal is to get this guy by itself. So like I said, we have a couple options here now. You can multiply three by the three or move the three over the other side. It's a little easier if you just move the three over the other side. And because 18 is divisible by three, it makes it nice. So 18 over three is six. And we're left with a one plus five e to the negative two x. We're almost to our goal, but this is by itself, but we have to take care of the one and the five. Easy ways to take care of the one first. So we subtract one from both sides. We get five then equal to five e to the negative two x. And now you're like, ooh, this is nice. Good things are happening here. So we divide both sides out by five. And so what happens is we get a one on the left, one equal to, and then the fives of course cancel over here. We just have e to the negative two x. Now that the exponential thing is by itself, we can just ln both sides. So ln both sides, that brings the negative two x down in front. So we're going to get ln of 1 is equal to negative 2x ln of e. And then ln of 1 and ln of e are actually nice. So remember, ln of 1, this is the number you raise e to to get 1. So it's actually 0, because e to the 0 is always 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And remember what ln of e is. ln of e, remember, it's saying, I'm next. what do you mean you're an exponent? It's what you raise e to to get e. So of course it's 1, because e to the 1 is how you get e. And so what we have here is really 0 equal to negative 2x. We divide both sides out by negative 2, of course, and we get 0 is equal to x. And so there's our answer. That nice little exponential uh, equation. All right. So we're almost done. We got a logarithmic equation here to do, and then we have a little word problem. So how do we solve this logarithmic uh, equation? Well, it's kind of like the exponential one. Instead of getting the exponential piece by itself, let's just get the logarithmic piece by itself, and then we can just do what it says. And so on this one, we'll subtract 5 first from both sides. 
And we'll get what? We'll get 3 ln of 2x is equal to, and then 5 minus 23, I think that's 18. Yep, 18. And then we'll divide. Again, we're trying to get this by itself. So we'll just divide both sides out by 3. And so we'll get here ln of 2x is equal to 6. And once we get to this point, there's two ways to solve this equation. And I'm going to do it both ways. We're going to do it one way, which I taught you, is do what the log says. But I'm going to show you another way, which is just as good. And it's something that I see students do all the time. So I know it's being taught out there. Um, but it's not what the log says. It's it's undoing the log, basically. But here, let's just do what it says first. So remember, there's a little e down here. And so what this actually says is e to the 6 is equal to 2x. So it says e to the 6 is equal to 2x. And as soon as I write that, it's basically game over. We'll just divide both sides by 2. And so this tells me, so that implies that my x is equal to e to the 6 over 2, which is the answer. Now, the problem here is sometimes we get stuck on this because we forget what the log says. So let me just rewrite this real fast. So you can see there's actually another way to do this. So ln of 2x equals 6. So instead of doing what the log says, you can do what the equation is kind of telling you what to do. So what do I mean by that? So if you look at an equation like this, like x plus 2 equals 8, how do you solve this? Well, you see the plus 2 and you say, well, I have to undo plus 2. I do the inverse of plus 2. So I just subtract 2 from both sides. And so I get x equal to 6. Well, the same thing, the same logic you can apply over here. It's like, oh, I have ln. I need to undo ln. How do you undo ln? How do you take the inverse of ln? Well, you e to the on both sides. So e to that is equal to e to that. And you know e to the ln, they undo each other. So you get 2x equals e to the 6. So that's another way to solve logarithmic equations. You just undo the logarithm by applying its inverse to both sides, which is a great way to solve these equations, you know. Um, and so I like, I don't, either way you want to do it, whichever way you're most comfortable with, you know, feel free. In the end, you should be able to do it both ways once you get comfortable with one of them. Um, doing what the log says is nice from for the theoretical point of view. But then also undoing operations is important to do because that's what, how you solve equations. You basically look at it and say, how do you undo that? Like, how do you undo a square? Well, you square root it. How do you undo an ln? You e to the uh, both sides, you know? Um, so that's a nice uh, nice uh, way to think uh, uh, about it. You still get the same answer, though. All right. One last problem, and then we're done. So let's take a look at this last example. So example three, it's just a nice little word problem. Um, it says what? It says the population P of a city is modeled by this formula P of T equal to 1200 E to the 0 0.0208 times T, T years after 1990. We want to find the population in 2015. So this takes a little bit of thought. It's kind of like, what is T in 2015? And the easiest way to explain this to you is like, just think about it as a birthday. Like if you were born in 1990, how old are you in 2015? So like 10 gets you to 2000, 15 to 2015. So you, you're 25 years old. So T is 25 years after 1990. And so what they want us to do here is just find P of 25. And so what's P of 25? Well, you just come up here and plug in 25 for your T. So you have 1200 E to the, and then, in the exponent, you have 0 0.0208, and that's going to be times 25. And again, 25 is up in that exponent piece. You're going to need a calculator for this, right? So you want to show your work, you know, what you're plugging in, and then just do it on your calculator. So we'll clear this out. And we can just do 1,200, and then second ln, that pulls up the e to the button. And then I like to put the 0 in there, so 0 0.0208. And we just multiply that by 25, so times 25. Hit enter, and out pops this number. And so for the population, maybe we'll just round to the nearest uh, person on this one. So this is approximately, oops, making a nice little wavy line. So approximately 2,018 people. So we know it's population. And we should check that. I think I, that was the number, right? Yep, 0.4, we round down. All right, the next question asks for what's the doubling 
time for the population. So when you're working with exponential functions, there are these sort of buzzwords. If your exponential function is growing, we call ask sometimes for the doubling time. If your exponential function is decaying, we call for the half-life. Uh, so the doubling time is just the time it takes for, in this case, your population to double. Whereas if it was decaying, it would be the half-life would be the time it takes for your population to have. Right? But this one's growing. So basically, what we have to realize is that our initial population is 1,200. And so for it to double, it would be 2,400. And then we want to figure out the time. We take 2,400 and we set it equal to the formula. So 2,400 equals 1,200 e to the 0 0.0208 times t. And now we're going to solve an exponential equation. So basically, we have an input problem where they give us the input and we find the output. Now they gave us the output, and we have to solve an equation to find the input. So how do we find t? Well, the idea is just get the exponential piece by itself. So we'll divide both sides out by 1,200. And then notice what happens. 2,400 over 1,200 is just the number 2, because you doubled 1,200. And that's equal to then e to 0 0.0208 times t. And then you know, like I taught you, to bring down the exponent, you L on both sides. But you can actually remember that because you have e to the. So how do you undo e to the? You just do its inverse. So you L in both sides. So this idea when you're solving equations, what's the problem? How do you undo the problem? Do its inverse to both sides. And so what do we get here? We get L of 2 equal to, and then this is going to fall down in front. So we get 0 0.0208t. And then you have you can write ln of e, but of course ln of e is going to be one because these guys are just going to can't solve basically, and so my t is going to be equal to. What's my t going to be equal to? Well, I just divide out both sides here by zero point zero two zero eight, and again both sides zero point zero two zero eight. So I write down the exact answer ln of two divided by zero point zero two zero eight, and then next to it. I can give the approximation. So my approximation, and again, they don't tell us what to round to here, so we kind of get it aside. So I have L on a 2 in parentheses divided by 0 0.0208. And I hit enter, and I get out about 33 years. Let's round to the nearest year. So 33 years. There we go. And so that's how we solve these sort of exponential equations, which again, I mean, we've seen these before, uh, but we're just specializing using E's and uh, LN's. All right, guys, that's all I have for you in this, uh, this video. Uh, you guys have a, a great weekend and I'll see you all on uh, Monday.